Catholics with a PhD in common sense. This is not low energy Catholic radio. High energy Catholic radio. Hey, if you're driving home, this is a Terry and Jesse show. I'm the Latin lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my partner. The Lebanese lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I can't believe we're on. Praise the Lord. I'm a retired Los <laughs> Angeles deputy sheriff. I'm a former boxing and karate instructor. I've got a master's degree in Catholic theology from Franciscan University of Steubenville. I uh, have a criminal justice degree, <laughs> a bachelor's degree. Can you, uh, I got a, a justice <laughs> mind, a legal mind, and I got a theology mind. I've also been married to the, I've been married to the same woman, Anita, for 34 years and counting. Thanks be to God. I hope to, uh, to, to be married to her to, till death do us part. My partner, Terry. Yeah, I'm a uh, Terry Barber. And for those who are from the East Coast and the Midwest who don't know us, uh, if you have ever written, uh, read the book Rome Sweet Home by Dr. Scott Hahn, I'm the knucklehead who brought Scott Hahn's conversion story to the Catholic world. Uh, in, in the book, it says there was a young couple coming back from Fatima, Portugal, from their honeymoon. That was me when I was young 30 years ago. And so I started St. Joseph Communications, Lighthouse Catholic Media. Now it's with the Augustine Institute. I train all the Lighthouse reps to uh, go and put those CDs in the back of churches. And now I've been putting, I've been working with Catholic Radio since 1985 when we only had five stations. And I'm like, is this the Twilight Zone? We've got a national radio broadcast show. Coast to coast. And I'm like, wow. So I'm here because I love Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. And I love you. And I want to give you what the Catholic Church teaches about the meaning and purpose of life. And I guarantee you one thing, guys. We're after you. We want to go out and get men engaged in their Catholic faith. Yes, my dear. uh, The women I'm talking to, would you like to have your husband more on fire for the faith? Have them tune into the Terry and Jesse show. Yes, there's a lot of high testosterone levels here. You know why? Because we're men and we have passion. You know what our passion is? Get people to heaven and get men engaged in their Catholic faith. So women, please ask your husbands to tune in to our show because what we're going to give them is the Catholic faith and we're not going to water it down. We're going to give them the truths of what Christ taught for 2,000 years. I know you're probably driving a lot of you. Some of you are probably eating dinner. Well, I'm going to give you some soul food. Dinner time. (laughs) Holy gospel according to Luke chapter 11, verse 37. That's today's gospel. Every single day, get some soul food, okay, into your your body. This is more important than your three squares a day. It says, after Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee, okay, these were the teachers of the law, invited him to dine at his home. Jesus entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools. Man, how do you, how do you like to be called a fool by God? <laughs> not me. <laughs> he says, you fools, did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give alms and behold, everything will be clean for you, the gospel of the Lord. So what's going on there? Okay, the religious zeal of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they basically focused on the exterior, you know, washing the body, washing the hands, this ritual cleanliness. But you know what they forgot? And Jesus Christ is bringing it to their attention. They forgot that it's a matter of the heart. The most important thing that's that's the most important thing here. It's better to have dirty hands and a clean soul than the opposite. That's what Jesus is getting at. And in fact, there's there's another Bible verse where Jesus Christ really nails it and really basically calls all of us to an account. It's in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Jesus says, For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, and murder. So what's the bottom line? Hey, wash your hands. That's a good thing. But go to confession more often, okay? That's better. Terry. Wow, that's powerful, and I I agree. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. And here at Relevant Radio, I want to remind everybody, they can get the Relevant Radio app. It's real simple. Just go online and get go to your your, your smartphone and go into the app store and type in Relevant Radio because then you can hear our show anywhere in the world. And at the same time, would you mind going online to www.relevantradio.com and, you know, 
put a little donation in because we're going nationwide now. We need everyone to support Relevant Radio so that we can continue to bring the good news of Jesus Christ. Have you heard of of a guy named St. Ignatius of Antioch? Mm-hmm. Well, if you haven't, today in the Catholic Church, we celebrate his feast day. He was amazing, okay? In, in case you're wondering where the term Catholic comes from, he's the first one that wrote the word Catholic. Here's what he wrote from a jail cell in 107 AD. He said this, where there is Christ Jesus, there is the Catholic Church. So who was Ignatius of Antioch? He was born in Syria, you know, over there where ISIS is at. Yep. He was the second or third bishop of Antioch, which is it's a, it's a, a, a city in Syria. Okay. He became a Catholic bishop. He lived to a ripe old age. He was well known for his fearless preaching. And guess what? He was sentenced to die in Rome itself. Why? For the crime of being a follower of Christ. For the crime of being a Catholic bishop faithful to the gospel. And so he was arrested. They started taking him to Rome, a whole squad of soldiers. And he writes in these letters, he calls the soldiers that picked them up, he calls the ten leopards. And he wrote seven seven letters in a jail cell. And these letters are, you can read them in the internet. Again, he wrote them around 107 AD. He writes that the Church of Jesus Christ is called the Catholic Church. He wrote about the Holy Eucharist, about the real presence. And he says only heretics deny the real presence. But here's the kicker. Okay? He's a, this guy's a man's man. When Ignatius of Antioch arrived in Rome around the year 107 AD, okay, he was thrown into the Colosseum with lions. And he met a martyr's death for Jesus and the church. And he actually said, he said that he wanted to be fine wheat in the mouth of lions. There's also another tradition that says that when he was being eaten by the lions in the Roman Colosseum, that he was singing and praising God as the lions were eating him inch by inch. You know what he said? His parting letter, he said, no pleasure, no earthly pleasures, no kingdom of this world can benefit me in any way. I prefer death in Jesus Christ to power over the furthest limits of the earth. He who died in place of us is the one object of my quest. St. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Terry. Amen. Did you know that October is the Down Syndrome Awareness Month? Did you know that? I'm going to ask you a question. When I read this, I want you to know some high official wrote this. And then I want to ask you where you think it came from. This particular person says, We are saluting the family members and caregivers of medical professionals and advocates who have dedicated themselves to ensuring that the extraordinary people enjoy lives filled with love and increasing opportunity. As a result of these remarkable efforts, people with Down syndrome are living longer and more enriched lives than ever before. But sadly, there remains too many people, like in France, who they won't let you have a Down syndrome baby. But both in the United States and throughout the world, they still see Down syndrome babies as an excuse to ignore or discard human life. These sentiments is and I has always will be tragically misguided. Thank you for that moral clarity. We must always be vigilant in defending and promoting the unique and special gifts of all citizens in need. We should not tolerate any discrimination against them as all people have an inherent dignity. Do you think that came from the Vatican or maybe from the Bishop's Conference? That's what I thought. And then I looked. It came from... The Oval Office, President John, President Donald J. Trump. I was like shocked when I read that. I was like, you got to be kidding me. The President of the United States. I didn't know that last year when I was voting. Wow. That's a shock. I, you know what I think that is? People must be praying for the president in a very powerful way because I don't think this guy would have done that a year ago. I think it's the power of prayer. That's my take. Without a doubt. Did you know? that there's Bible studies going on at the White House. <laughs> what? There hasn't been Bible studies in the White House in about a 100 years, in over a 100 years. This White House right now, this present cabinet, 
is the most evangelical cabinet in history. Now, I know some Catholics may say, well, I wish they were Scott Hahn Bible studies. You know what? Maybe we'll get there one of these days, okay? But let's just be happy that at least their Protestant Bible studies, they believe in the same God, the same Jesus. So that's a start. What would you as a Catholic, would you prefer, prefer for the White House to have secular humanism sessions and moral relativism sessions, or would you rather have them have evangelical Bible studies? I don't know about you, but I'll, I'll say, yep, I'm, I'm cool with that. That's a start. And you know something else interesting? Maybe Hollywood media moguls, they should follow President Trump's example, and maybe Hollywood studios should start Bible studies in all their studios. What do you think? You know, instead of going to Arizona or Switzerland for sex therapy, I would recommend that all these Hollywood studios have Bible studies, get to know Jesus, get, receive the grace of God, have a life of faith. You know, uh, I, I don't know about you, but to me, that seems like the, the best therapy in the world. Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. Don't leave home without it. Terry. Amen. When we come back, we're going to talk about psychiatry and sin. Fulton Sheen talks about a book called Whatever Became of Sin. Yes, we're going to say this. That not everyone is immaculately conceived, unless you're the Blessed Virgin Mary. So when we come back, you won't want to miss what Fulton Sheen has to say about sin and psychiatry. More in a moment. It's the Terry and Jesse Show on Relevant Radio. It's Terry and Jesse. Put your seatbelts on. If you already are driving, you better have your seatbelt on. I guarantee you one thing, you won't fall asleep driving home with the Terry and Jesse show. We talked about the psychiatry and sin. And Fulton Sheen quotes this in one of his recordings about Carl Menninger. He had the Psychiatric Institute of Kansas, and he published a book entitled, Whatever Became of Sin? He shows the slow evolution of the concept of sin and according to him moralists stopped preaching about sin because everything was love then the uh, jurist picked up the theme and sin under law became a crime then he said psychiatrists took it up from the legalist and sin became a symptom or a complex some rather tragic effects have resulted from the denial of sin first of all we have many complex uh, complexities of, of what the product of sin is and we are blind to the truth. Think, check this out. Carl Menninger was not a Christian. He was Jewish. But Fulton Sheen had a very good insight. And I'd like you, Jesse, my brother, to talk about this because I know you travel all over the country talking out there, talking about the reality of sin in our culture. Uh, Fulton, uh, Venerable Sheen sounds exactly like St. John Paul II. Both of these incredible intellectual giants and holy men have talked to us about the denial of sin. That's the problem with our society. You know, uh, for example, take the Harvey Weinstein, for example. Okay. He's over here in Arizona somewhere in some sex therapy uh, place where he's being treated. Right. Here's the, here's the problem, okay? If they're going to pump his brain with nothing but a, a steady diet of secular human thought. He's going to get Sigmund Freud, Carl Rogers, Alfred Kinsey, William Reich. Oh, by the way, these last two, they had sexual relations with their patients. This is what they're going to pump Harvey Weinstein with. You know what Harvey Weinstein needs? He needs Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The good okay? news. He doesn't need Freud, Rogers, Kinsey, and Reich. He needs Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he has the sickness of the soul. And you know what's interesting? Uh, it, it's not just actresses and directors and studio heads who are speaking out, who are speaking out of, against Harvey Weinstein, the former Hollywood golden boy. It's even his former employees. Yep. His former employees are making new allegations of sexual misconduct. It's coming to light every single day. It, it's pretty clear that Harvey Weinstein had this this entire network that they kept silent of assistants, executives, and other insiders, and they were just afraid to say anything. In fact, there was an interview in The Guardian. There's an anonymous ex-staffer of the Weinstein Company 
And she said this. She goes, we weren't safe either, the staff. She says uh, that Miramax, she says it's, it was an abusive relationship on every level working for Harvey Weinstein. He manipulated everyone in his path with one purpose, and that was for sex. It's awful. I should have walked out. I should have said something. Once again, why is why is Hollywood such a culture of rape, sex abuse, STDs, hooking up, divorce, and pedophilia? I'll tell you why, the long and the short of it, because they've kicked out God. When you kick out God, what do you invite? Secular humanism. And guess what the Pope calls secular humanism? He calls it this worldliness of secular humanism is diabolical. Kicking out God has brought in the diabolical to Hollywood, and now the chickens are coming home to roost. Terry? Not only is it uh, caused these problems, but kicking God out of our culture is costing us in our pocketbook. 110 million people are walking around with STDs, sexually transmitted disease. The the Department of the Government in Atlanta, the disease center, says that. And guess how much money you and I are spending on people with STDs regarding our health policies. $16 billion a year. I have a joke. I know how to lower premiums for health care. Live a moral life called chastity. Live according to the gospel. So if we live the gospel in America, your premium rates will go down. And... You can take this to uh, upstairs. In other words, you get to go to heaven when you live a life centered on Christ. And also on earth, your premium payments will go down by just living a chaste life. I know that sounds funny, but you know what? There's a lot of truth in what I'm saying. You know, Hollywood used to have the self-regulation. Yep. Really, they used to have what's called the Hayes Code. It was started back right around 1922. It was uh, reacting to complaints from predominantly Protestant groups about Hollywood sex and drug scandals. So they started the self-censorship, this uh, motion pictures, producers, and distributors of America, where they were started by a guy named Will Hayes. He was a Presbyterian, and he was the director. It was called the Hayes Code. And shortly thereafter, a Catholic jumped in by the name of Joseph Breen. And he became the face of the production code and administration office to Hollywood. And, and he, in 1933, excuse me, he started what's called the Legion of Decency. It was backed up by the Catholic bishops. So now you have the Hayes Code and the Legion of Decency. One started by a Protestant, the other one started by Catholics. It was basically started to regulate Hollywood from the movies that they were putting out just to be kind of a moral uh, a, a moral arbiter of the movies that they were putting out. But I'll tell you when this basically started crashing and burning. This started crashing and burning in, in really like the late 50s when Hugh Hefner, he challenged the Hayes Code by starting Playboy. 1953 started Playboy, which was a direct challenge to the Hayes Code and to the Catholic Legion of Decency. And Hugh Hefner with a series of, you know, uh, of uh, f financial legal briefs that he filed. In 1968, the Supreme Court held the First Amendment right of filmmakers to show sexually explicit films, but they did tell the motion picture industry, well, you got to kind of self-police yourself, but you could go ahead and show nudity on the, sc uh, on the screen in 1968. Well, guess what? That's basically when the Legion of Decency and the Hayes Code it went defunct. It went by the wayside because now with the U.S. Supreme Court weighing in saying, hey, you could put smut uh, out on the big screens. That basically uh, it, 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 it expelled, it abolished the Hayes Code and it abolished the, the Catholic Legion of Decency. And today, here's a huge problem with Hollywood. Did you know that in 1998, the University of Texas did a survey of Hollywood writers, actors, producers, and executives. Guess what? Okay? Put on your seatbelt because you're probably going to fall off. If you're driving, hold on to the wheel. Okay? Hold on. Check this out. Only 2 to 3% of people that work in the film industry 
attend religious services weekly. Is this microphone on? Hold on, hold on. Okay, it's on. Yep. So the people that are putting out television and movies, 98, 97% of them do not go to church or synagogue. And they're the ones that are using the television to disciple us as secular humanists and moral relativists. Terry? Before we take a break, I think we got a call, but if you just tuned in, this is the Terry and Jesse show. It's the first time you're listening. We're two evangelical Catholics with PhDs in common sense. If you want to contact us, go to the page Terry and Jesse at relevantradio.com, and we'd love to chat with you. We've got a caller. I don't have his name, but welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Yeah, how you doing, brother? Gilbert. Gilbert, welcome, my friend. What's on your mind? Thanks for calling in. My brother's in my brother's in Christ, uh, Jesse. Hey, um, first I want to congratulate you guys, man. I, I am so so excited that you guys have gone national, and I don't I don't see this as a coincidence. I think the Lord put you guys in this time slot nationwide, so everybody can hear the truth of what you guys are speaking. And you know, I'm excited because they're not going to get you know you know you know, Luke watered down Kumbaya Catholicism. They're going to get in your face <laughs> truthful Catholicism that people, especially men, need to hear. And for those of you listening, I mean, hold on. I, you know, Terry and Jesse might seem a little blunt at times, but hang in there. And I promise you, I promise you that your faith will grow, especially husbands and brothers and all the men that are listening, and I am I am well, so happy and, and proud well, of you. Well, Gilbert, you, you keep telling all about it, but Gilbert, I just want to say thanks for calling, and I would encourage any of the women with their men, their husbands, tune into this show because Gilbert, we touched Gilbert years ago with this faith that we've been able to pass on to men because that's really what we want to do is fire the men up. So, Gilbert, thanks for your endorsement of our show, but I guarantee you women who are listening, moms and dads, listen to this show because we are on fire to turn you into radioactive Catholics who are going to lead your kids to heaven. That's what we're going to do. So if you feel a little, like, overwhelmed, it's okay. When we come back, we'll tell you more about what we're going to be doing. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. More in a moment. For today's giveaway, call 877-526-2151. Catholic and proud of it. It's the Terry and Jesse Show on Relevant Radio. Hey, do you suffer from low T? <laughs> Listen to this program. <laughs> Trust me. We'll take care of that problem. Hey, you know, uh, you know what gets me? Going back to Harvey Weinstein, because this is this is major news all over the news cycles. There's another actress that just came out. Her name is Jennifer Lawrence. And she says that this it, this problem in Hollywood, she just had, gave an interview with the BBC. She says the sexual assault uh, problem is endemic in the Hollywood industry. She says she spent basically all her 20s, all her 20s, uh, to keep old men from uh, uh, sexually assaulting her. I can't actually say what the article yeah, no, says. No, I got it. Yeah. She was fighting off. All her 20s as an actress to keep men from assaulting her in Hollywood. And she says, uh, if you got kids near this, I'm going to keep it clean. It's a family show. But she yep. said that they, this is what we, we call in Catholicism when you break somebody's innocence, a child's innocence. She said at the age of 20, uh, no, as a teenager, excuse me, she was made to take part in a nude lineup, okay, uh, where she was basically degraded. And humiliated by the producers as, uh, you know, she had to prance around nude. And That's she the price said, she paid. Yep. Yeah, this is the price she paid for, for fame and fortune and stuff. Yep. But now she's speaking out against it. And she's not Good. the only one. I mean, th- these actors are, are, are coming out of the woodwork. Alisa Milano, Tarana Burke, America Ferrara. I mean, one after another. And that's a good thing because I'll tell you, it's a good thing. Because we cannot cure something until it's exposed. That's but right. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. Hollywood's going to make the same mistake. 
that a lot of people do make. And we know as Catholics, I mean, uh, the, the U.S. bishops admitted as much that what we did during the pre-sexual scandal crisis in 2002, many of the U.S. bishops said that we relied too much on psychology and not enough on theology. In other words, I'm asking, I'm going to tell anybody who knows Harvey Weinstein over there, I'm serious, I'm in Arizona. If you can get me to meet with him, I would love to. I would go and pray with him. I would go and introduce him to Jesus. I would Amen. take him a Bible. I would I would bring a holy priest to re, to receive him into the church. Harvey Weinstein's a Jew. He comes from the tribe of, you know, uh, from, from the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I would like to introduce him to the son of Yahweh. His name's Jesus Christ, who can save him, heal him, and set him free. Terry? Amen. I hope that happens. Hey, we can't do it without you. You know, I also want to mention that psychologists typically refrain from diagnosing someone from afar, uh, someone like Weinstein, who is accused of sexually assaulting a string of actresses over the years. But they say it fits the profile of a sexual predator, not an addict. See the difference? A profile of a sexual predator, not an addict. I think you can control your impulses, he says. He just decided not to do so, said Holly Richmond, a certified sex therapist in Los Angeles, right in my backyard. Therapists are also divided on whether sex addictions even exist. This is interesting. The leading psychiatry reference known as the Diagnostic, Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the fifth edition, updated in 2013, does not include sex addiction. Its authors decided it did not fit the definition of a psychological disorder. According to Richmond, there is no such thing as a sex addict. What are your this thoughts on that one? Yeah. This, this article is called Sex Addict. You can get it on our on our Twitter account or on Relevant Radio's yep. uh on our on the website on Relevant Radio on our show page. It's called Sex Addict Therapy, unlikely to help Harvey right. Weinstein. And these experts, these slew of experts in this article are basically saying, guess what? Uh, sex therapy doesn't help anybody. No, it's okay? his behavior. <laughs> yeah. It's, Come on, uh, let's it, call it for what it yeah, is. The doctor says here it's a behavioral issue. Sex yeah. is not the problem. And there's been a lot of these people. you got, you know, English comic actor Russell Brand, Tiger Woods, uh, rocker Ozzy oh, yeah. Osbourne, Bill Clinton, actor Michael Douglas. All these high-power celebrities who have proclaimed that they're battling sex addiction after their philandering was revealed. You, you know what this is? This is uh, seriously, it's, a, it's nothing but a PR stunt. Okay, that's what it is. Because for the secular humanists, because they don't have the benefit of Jesus Christ and the sacrament of confession, you know what they do? For them, secular therapy, that's their confessional. But it doesn't work. I'll tell you what therapy does work. Christian therapy, where they Thomistic philosophy where the therapist understands the nature of original sin Amen. the nature of concupiscence the nature of our fallen nature and the nature of grace apart from a therapist knowing that those Thomistic truths i would let them tinker with my brain for a second terry well i'm just going to give the story because stories tell the story i uh, i do some prison ministry okay and a lot of times in the prisons okay they're letting these guys who have had sexual crimes watch. Ready for this? But are you ready yet? Pornography. And we're paying for it to show pornography to guys in prison who have had sexual addictions. You know, is this microphone on? This is how, how mixed up the world is without God. See, here's the bottom line. When we don't have God in our culture, this is the kind of stuff that's going to happen. But when we have, like, I would say an understanding of original sin. When Jesse mentioned Thomistic, that means St. Thomas Aquinas teaching, showing how we have a fall in our human nature. I would like my brother to explain concupiscence because lots of people hear that word, but I'm not sure everybody understands that term. Concupiscence means that every one of us, as the result of original sin and the sin of Adam and Eve, it has been propagated. We have we have basically inherited that original sin of Adam and Eve, which means what? That we have a fallen nature, that we have this inclination towards sin. 
is something we have to fight against for the rest of our life. When we're baptized, now we have an advantage because we went, we went from natural children of God to supernatural children of God. So now we receive sanctifying grace. Grace is the power of God, the strength of God, the life of God that gives us the power to overcome sin, to overcome concupiscence, this fallen nature of ours. But apart, see, that's why there's no solution for people that go to these sex therapy uh, places. It's a Band-Aid. You know what they're doing? They're putting a Band-Aid over their heart when they need heart surgery. They need the sacred heart of Jesus. You know what they need? Here's what they need. They need the love of Jesus Christ to be poured into their heart. They need for God the Father to take the cross of Christ, as Scott Hahn says, like a scalpel and take off their stony heart and put on a heart of flesh, the beating heart of Christ. They need a heart transplant. They need to realize that they're children of God and that they can't do it without God. If they think, I can do it with this pill, I can do it by reading this book, I can, you know what they do in these, uh, in a lot of these uh, areas in uh, New Mexico, Arizona? You know what they do? They teach them yoga. They give them self-help books. They teach them how to chant mantras. And, uh, they teach them what's called, uh, mind mentalness or mind meditation. These are all Eastern religious techniques. They don't go to the heart of the problem. You know what psychology means? Psychology means the study of the soul. You know who's the doctor of the soul? Jesus Christ. You know you want to be saved? You don't want to be healed and set free? Go to Jesus Christ, have a relationship with him, and receive the sacraments of the church. That's where the power of Jesus Christ floods into your body like Niagara Falls. And I'm going to say this right across America. If you haven't been to confession in over a month and you're waiting for an invitation, that's me. I'm asking you to go to confession. I'm a sinner. You know what they say? I'm a saint under construction. So I go to confession at least twice a month. At least go once a month. Why? Because you don't want to fall into the sin of pornography and then into sex addiction. Yes, I'm talking to you, buddy. Right now. Go to confession. Get rid of that pornography that we're having in our culture. Throw it out. And get to confession. That's what it takes because Jesus Christ is waiting there. And he's always willing to forgive you. And again, when we come back from the break, I got the sheriff from Washington State. He's going to tell you something about firearms that you're not going to want to miss because this is the sheriff and he knows what he's talking about. I want to get your take on this because it's not every day you have a sheriff talking to you about the issue of guns and the culture that we're in. You're not going to want to miss it because I'll tell you why. He's talking with common sense. But again, this is a, a, a sheriff who's been involved in these crimes. Like Jesse's been a sheriff for 20 years. This guy's been a sheriff for 40 years. And what he has to say about guns, you're just not going to want to miss it. We'll be back in a moment. This is the Terry and Jesse Show on Relevant Radio. This is the Lord's Gym. We are your spiritual fitness trainers. This is UFC time. Nope, not Ultimate Fighting Challenge, Ultimate Faithful Catholics. And this is the Lord's Gym. Guess what? We're going to make you part of the MMA. Nope, not Mixed Martial Arts, Mother <laughs> Mary's Army. We want, you to, we want you to hear this common sense sound, sound clip from a Washington sheriff who talks about the gun culture. I'll tell you why. Because there's a big gun debate. Every time there's a killing spree or a massacre... You, you find a lot of people, a lot of secular humanists, progressives, they start clamoring about stopping the gun violence, and they start telling, pressuring politicians to have the courage to face down the powerful gun lobby, to take people's guns away. And uh, I want you to hear from a sheriff, and I think he nails it on the gun culture from a common sense level. Play the clip. All depends on the 15-year-old. I can tell you, folks, I carried a gun. All my life, I hunted, I, I shot. My friends and I, it's hunting season back home. When I was in high school, every one of those rigs in the high school parking lot had a gun in the gun rack. Why? We went hunting on the way home. None of those guns ever walked into a school. None of those guns ever shot anybody. What's the difference? 
did the gun change or did you as a society change? Now I'll give, I'll give you odds that it was you as a society because you started glorifying cultures of violence. You glorified the gang culture. You glorified games that actually give you points for raping and killing people. Wow, common sense Washington Sheriff. You know, I, I lived in Southern California all my life up until about two and a half years ago. And uh, I live not too far from Hollywood. In fact, I, I worked down in Hollywood for a little while as a, as a deputy sheriff. And I can tell you, the videos that are put out by Hollywood glorifying violence in the gang con- culture, those videos are broadcast throughout the world. And nobody calls them out on it. You know, people people want to go after the the law-abiding citizen, the rational, the responsible, calm gun owner who understands the seriousness of a gun. These are the Americans who are law-abiding. They have a gun for self-defense in their home, or some of them are hunters or competitive shooters, or they have it in their place of business. They don't have a record, or maybe a law enforcement officer, a soldier. These are the good people that carry guns. But guess what? The the bad guys, the killers, they're not going to care about any gun legislation. They could care less. The, the gun culture that nobody's talking about is that gun culture that's promoted by the Hollywood liberals. Yep. The Hollywood liberals that are always having movies and commercials and videos with viol- gratuitous violence. The misuse of weapons, machine guns, full of guns, full of sex, full of violence. And you know what? Everybody gives them a pass. Every single action film and video game that's found in Hollywood is full of guns. The misuse of guns, I might add. Gratuitous violence. In fact, I think every one of us, every one of us is exposed to more guns by Hollywood than a year, than a full year of exposure from the good people that carry guns in, in the private sector. I will add this because we're brand new this week. If you disagree with us, we're big boys, okay? We're welcome to dialogue with you. And that number you can call is 888-914-9149 because not everybody agrees with what we're te- teaching on this. This is not a, a, a Catholic moral teaching of morality. It's common sense. And I'll just say this, and then I'd like to hear from you if we have time for you to call. You can always call during the week. But I could tell you, I know personal stories of friends of mine who we call it packing that have prevented many, many crimes. Because when the bad guy realizes that you've got a gun, he's like, hey, I'm going to go check on I'm going to go work on somebody who's a lot easier than you. And so I would just say to you that uh, when you have a reasonable person who has a morality, a Christian who loves Jesus, I don't, you're not going to see a Christian who is in love with Jesus Christ go out and shoot people indiscriminately. Okay? That's just not going to happen. So I, my take on it is, let's convert the United States to Christian, Christianity so that everyone will be responsible because they love Jesus. I know that sounds like, well, how can you have that? But here's my point. Not everybody loves Jesus. So for a reasonable person to be packing to protect his family, I think it makes sense. As a matter of fact, the catechism of the Catholic Church says this. If somebody comes into my house to do harm to my wife and family, I'm going to use proportionate measures to stop them. And if that means using my gun to stop that person from raping my wife or raping my kids, it's going to happen every time. And I know that the barber house, that's what happens. Jesse, how about at your home? Well, I'm going to I'm going to disclose a little bit of myself here. I have I have stopped. I carry a gun all the time. I'm a retired deputy sheriff. I'm allowed to carry a gun in 50 states because of the Patriot Act. I have prevented two crimes, one in a movie theater because I was carrying a gun and I stopped the robbery. Another one in a liquor store uh, where somebody came in with a gun and I was able to come behind him. Surprise! And I stopped the robbery. Uh, so I can tell you that I was, and, and a third one, excuse me, in a hotel. I remember that too. Yeah, uh, that's right, the hotel. A, a, a friend that's of myself, one. off duty, we also stopped four bad guys from robbing a hotel. So I can tell you, this guy that you're listening to on Catholic Radio, Jesse Romero, the Latin lover of Jesus, I have <laughs> stopped 
three crimes, possible murders, at the very least robberies, because I had a gun in my hip, I took it out, and I was able to prevent something worse from happening. Hey, we got a call from Chicago. We got Marie call from Chicago. Marie, you're on. Go. Jesse and Terry, thank you so much for being outspoken in the way that you are. Um, I have been somewhat that same way, and I was put down many times. But one time I took care of an LPN, took care of a gentleman who was Jewish, and he said, you take care of all your patients like this, and why do you like Children's <laughs> Memorial so much? And it was a Jew who also yeah. donated to Children's Memorial. He ended up being a philanthropist, owning corporations around the world. And I didn't have to do anything. I called the doctor, you know, because there's, uh, in the Jewish faith, they have what they call sadaka. I think I'm mm -hmm. pronouncing it correctly, mm -hmm. where there are three people. One needs something, another person knows about it, and the other person has the means to help them. He said, do they take care of all children? I said, yes. He said, well, listen, you'd go and let that Jewish doctor know who took care of your son that I am sending her a check in the mail. He wow. Said, because if they take care of those kids, I sent checks to the Shriners Hospital, put a wing on to a hospital in Chicago. And if, I want you to know this right now. And he said it in front of the main doctor at the hospital. <laughs> he says, and doctor, tell her the rest. He said, well, Mr. So-and-so, because I promised I would never reveal sure. his name, is willing right. to send your son anywhere in the world for care. Well, my son now has been a firefighter working in California, Good. helping other people to evacuate and helping in the fires. And he's had surgery, too, and different things in his own life. But I am so proud of him, and I'm sure they you would be, be just as proud. Maria, well, I am so you. proud of you to give that witness story of how, how you're, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Your loving care brought that generosity out of him. That's my take. Thank you for that touching phone call. Uh, you're listening to The Lord's Gym, and uh, we're your spiritual fitness trainers. We're on here on the west, on the east coast. We're on uh, from 8 p.m. and on. And on the West Coast, on the Pacific Coast, we're on from 5 p.m. We're on Monday through Friday. So if you want to, if, if you got low T and you want to raise your, your testosterone level, hey, just listen to this radio program. <laughs> Trust me, okay? We'll, we'll, we'll take care of that problem. Going back to, again, this uh, the gun culture, don't you think with all the action films with violence, gratuitous violence, all the video games that represent gratuitous violence and murder, don't you think that inside the mind of a young person who doesn't know Jesus, who's a secular humanist, who's, who's basically uncatechized, don't you think this is going to have an, an, an impact on him? This message that guns are meant to impose your will upon another person and guns represent the ultimate form of power. And you know what happens? To lonely young men from the barrios and the ghettos, something I know a little bit about, they come from fatherless families. You know what happens? They become frustrated by their failure to be part of a society with a dad with an intact family. And you know what? All these gratuitous films and videos from Hollywood, it makes the gun the ultimate platform and the ultimate avenger because oftentimes these marginalized kids they feel, man, uh, you know, I, I got I got dealt a bad a, a bad hand in life, and now I'm going to take care of it. Terry, if you just tuned in, we're at the end of our show. This is the Terry and Jesse show. We've been broadcasting together for ten years, and Jesse's a former cop. I'm a former baseball umpire. I was in a monastery. I started St. Joseph Communications. I started Lighthouse Catholic Media. I've been distributing millions of recordings for years, and now I'm full-time into Catholic Radio with Relevant Radio. If you want to contact us, go to Terry and Jesse at RelevantRadio.com. Jess, what state should we be living in? I'll tell you what. Uh, we can argue about California, Arizona, New York, but you better be living in the state of grace. That's what I'm talking about. And I'll tell you one state you don't want to be living in. You don't want to be living in the state of mortal sin. If you're there, go to confession. Get out as soon as possible. You don't want to be there not even for a weekend. You know why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ, he wants us, he wants us to, to hate sin. 
and to love eternal life. Love the cross. We should love the cross so much, as Fulton Sheen says, that we should get to the point where we can drink water like death. Terry? Thanks again for joining the Terry and Jesse show. We'll be back again tomorrow with you. Thanks for joining us for this quick hour. May God richly bless you and full sheen ahead. For today's giveaway, call 877-526-2151. 